welcome back to the vlog. I hope you're all having a lovely, lovely week. So I am actually at home today. Uh, it is a Saturday afternoon. I am at home and I am sewing up a sample for one of our kids classes next week. So it is just coming up to Easter and the children are on holiday, school holidays, and we run children's sewing bee classes um, in the school holidays and we also run after school clubs as well. And one of the projects that we're making next week is this really cute uh, bunny bag. Um, you can put your little Easter eggs and various bits and pieces in it. And it's so cute. I needed to sew up some samples anyway. And I thought, you know what? Oh goodness, hold on. Come here. So, long time um, watchers of the vlog will know that Tallulah <laughs> obviously is my cat and she lives with me and is one of the reasons why I don't really film vlogs at home anymore. Not really, not really. Um, so yes, she is here and um, I just thought it'd be a nice thing to kind of do a little tutorial so that you guys, if you wanted to make them or preferably make them with your kids or children that you know, um, then this would be a good, simple little tutorial for you to make. What do you reckon? What do you think? She's thrown me so much, I can't even remember what I was um, talking about, but I'm going to show you how to make these really cute little bunny bags and hopefully you enjoy it and hopefully the young sewers um, that you uh, show this to or do this with will enjoy it as well. So supplies wise, you're gonna need a few simple bits to sew up your bunny bags. Fabric wise, you are going to need some plain uh, cotton fabric for the main body and uh, outside of your ears. So I am using a medium weight cotton calico or cotton calico canvas that we sell in the online shop uh, purely because it's uh, just nice and neutral and it's got a nice uh, weight to it. So it's quite sturdy, good for uh, holding up all those Easter eggs, holding up the weight of all the Easter eggs. Uh, so you will need three 10 inch by 10 inch squares cut out of that. Obviously I'll pop all the details and instructions in writing down below as well in terms of measurements. Uh, so three 10 inch by 10 inch squares. I would recommend that you draw your 10 inch by 10 inch square on a piece of paper and use it as a template which, which you then pin to your fabric and cut out. Obviously um, for any young children I'd recommend that the adults do the cutting and the um, kids can just concentrate on the sewing. Um, and then for the ears, you want to uh, measure a four inch by seven inch tall rectangle. One rectangle made an ear shape. You can see my line in the middle there where I folded it in half and then cut from the widest point at the bottom up to the center point at the top to create that ear. And then I use that as a template for my other ear and my outer fabric. And then I've also used um, that template to create two inner um, ears. <laughs> so um, I've used a lilac felt here just because that's what I had to hand, but actually you can use any kind of cotton um, fabric or felt. So with your cotton fabric, it might be quite nice to use like a contrasting print. So if you've got any like floral fabrics around, I could see those looking really cute. Um, because these are going to create the kind of contrast with our ears. So three squares for the main body, two ears in your main fabric and two ears in your contrasting fabric. Uh, you'll also want some things with straps. So I am using this poly, this kind of like plasticky webbing that we sell in the shop. We've got this in a few different colours, um, but you can use any webbing that you've got to hand. These I've cut to 16 inches long, but again, you can kind of adjust that to whatever length you want them to be, as it's your bag. And if you don't have any webbing, you could make your own fabric straps. Um, these are, I think these are about an inch wide. So if you did say two and a half inch wide strips of fabric, you could fold that in half, um, right sides together, stitch down it with the seam allowance, turn it through, um, and then you'll have one long strip of fabric that you could cut in half and then use as your, as your strap. But we're gonna stick to webbing for, for this one. And then supplies wise, or tools wise, I should say, you um, only need a few basics. So uh, we will be using pins and 
my trusty fabric clips uh, and my favourite magnetic pincushion. Uh, maybe, possibly, you might need an unpicker. So I've got one of those to hand as well, just in case. Um, you'll want some little snips. You'll obviously need fabric uh, scissors or scissors that are nice and sharp for cutting out your fabric and then just some little snips to hand. Um, you'll want some thread. So for the main body, I'm just sticking to a matching thread like this cream colour. But when we do our little faces um, with hand sewing, you will want a hand sewing needle and uh, maybe a contrasting, a couple of contrasting threads for your face as well. But that's it, so not very much um, in terms of supplies are required. I'm going to get the sewing machine up and we will get sewing our bags. So first thing we're going to do is start with one of our square pieces and we are going to fold down the top edge or one of the edges, which we're gonna treat as the top, by one and a half centimetres or five eighths of an inch. Or if you're, um, without a measuring tool, because I didn't mention one of those in the supply list, but you could use a little ruler or a seam gauge to make sure. Um, but I always do it to about the width of my thumb is approximately 1.5 centimetres. So you're just gonna fold that down, pop it under and stitch it at a one centimetre or three eighth seam allowance. And uh, we're gonna use a one centimetre or three eighth seam allowance for everything, unless I tell you otherwise, okay? Um, I'm using a straight stitch, um, just on a medium length. And I'm just gonna stitch that in place. So that is going to be the top of the front of our bag. So for now, I'm gonna pop this to one side. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on sewing up the ears. So you will need one of your fabric ears and one of your contrasting, or I should say one of your main body fabric ears and one of your contrasting fabric ears. And you're going to put those right sides together, nice sides touching. And then you might want to just pop a couple of clips or pins in the edges. What we're going to do is we're going to sew down from the top opening here down to the tip and then we're going to pivot and sew down the other side. So I'm going to stitch down here at my one centimetre seam allowance. Stop with the needle down, lift my lever up and pivot so I can then sew down the other side. So I've stitched down to the tip or the point of the ear, this bit, and I've put my needle down. I'm gonna lift my lever up and then I'm gonna move the ear round, line it back up with my one centimetre seam allowance and carry on sewing down the other side. Brilliant, then we're gonna do the same on the other ear. So we're gonna pop our main body fabric and our contrasting fabric right sides together pop a couple of clips in and then we will stitch down from this end down to the point, pivot and then go up this side. So you should now have two ears. Um, if I show you with the contrasting side out, this is the wrong side of my, my felt obviously doesn't have an obvious right or wrong side, but if you're using a contrasting fabric, this would be the wrong side that you could see at the moment, uh, but you can see the stitch line. What we're going to do is using our scissors, we are going to just trim that seam allowance down by about half. So it's just not quite so bulky. I'm just gonna carefully do that on both ears. It's so nice to sew something that's just a bit cute and fun. I really like these. Right, so I've trimmed those down. Uh, what I'm also gonna do just at the tip, at the point, I'm gonna just cut across um, again I'm not cutting through the stitch line, I'm leaving about half a centimetre between the top. That just takes the bulkiness out of the tip and means that I can turn it through a little bit easier. So I am then going to do exactly that. I'm going to turn these through right sides to outwards, sorry, right sides outwards, so that they start looking like an ear. Now, what you might find is that your 
points might need a little poke out with a pencil or a point turner to get them nice and pointy. So you should have two little ear shapes at the moment with contrasting fabric on one side and the plain fabric on the other. Um, you can give it a little press or you can um, use your iron to give it a quick press if you need to. But I tend to find that just giving it a little squish with my hands just at the edges of the seams is enough to flatten it out. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to fold in the bottom edges so that they meet roughly in the middle like that. Can you see? And that will give us our sort of ear shape and show both um, parts of the fabric. So what we'll do is pop either a pin or a clip in the bottom there just to hold that in place. <laughs> and we're just gonna sew a little line of stitching. You want this to be just under a one centimeter seam allowance. So I just line up the edge here with the edge of my sewing machine foot to hold it in place. And just do a little line of stitching. You want it to be just less than the one centimetre so that when we put the bags together, that's hidden in the seam allowance. I'm just doing the same on the other ear. So folding it into the middle and I'm just going to pop a little clip in and then do my little line of stitching. And then you've got two ears. Uh, <laughs> love those. Coordinate with my jumper. What we're now going to do is assemble the back part of the bag with the straps and the ears. And there's just a little bit of sandwiching to do here. So if you lay down one of your uh, remaining two squares um, with the right side of the fabric facing up at you, I'm going to take my ears and I'm going to just pop them somewhere evenly uh, at the top. I'm just going to see if you can see this. I'm just pop them so that they line up on the top of my fabric. I'm going to pop some clips in and then I'll hold it up so you can see what I'm talking about. So I have put them equally about a third in either side, okay? Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, one of my pieces of webbing, I'm gonna make it a nice little smiley uh, face shape and I'm gonna line up the raw edges, so the cut edges at the top on my clip. Yeah. <laughs> it's so strange. Um, sort of filming with the setup like this because I never normally do it and everything's in different places. Right, so can you see I have got the strap clipped at the top either end like this and either side of the ears. Uh, what you want to try and make sure is that you don't twist the strap when you clip it on. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew, again, just under my one centimetre seam allowance, uh, I'm going to line up the edge of the fabric with the edge of my foot so that I know I get just under a centimetre. And I'm just going to stitch those um, straps and ears in place. <laughs> So there you go, that is the uh, ears and one strap all sewn in. Um, it just means that they're now kind of basted in place so that when we do what we're gonna do next, which is sandwich them in between our other layer of outer fabric, we don't have to worry about 
and shifting. So what I'm going to do is take my other square, not the one that I had sewn the top down on, but my other non-stitch square, and I'm going to lay it over the top and along that edge where all of my um, straps and ears are, I'm going to clip it in place so that they're sandwiched in between. And then I'm going to use a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance so that it matches how much we've turned this other piece down by. Um, and I'm going to stitch that in place. So 1.5 centimetres is 5 eighths of an inch. So I've stitched that in at the moment, you can't really see anything. What we're going to do is flip that out that way. And can you see? We've got half of a bag uh, with our ears and our straps held in place. Uh, what I'm going to do is just give this a little press down with my hands again at the top. And then I'm going to line up this edge. So I'm going to ignore the straps and the ears. I'm going to line up this edge and stitch a one centimetre seam allowance uh, line just to hold all of that in place. So can you see that's just a little line of top stitching one centimetre in from this edge which has just trapped everything down, seam allowance down and everything. Uh, so that is one side of our bunny bag, uh, the front side to be precise. So at this point you are going to want to draw with a pencil a little bunny face on the front. Uh, no comment on my artistic abilities <laughs> and we are going to decorate or create the face of our bunny now you only want to do it on this uh, outside layer because then anything that we do will be trapped and hidden inside this is almost like a little lining at the back here so I've drawn my bunny face on you can do this in <laughs> so many different ways to be honest, this is like time for you to get creative. I'm going to use some thread, I'm going to switch to a top stitching thread on the sewing machine and stitch the whiskers on and then I'm going to use a little piece of felt in the coordinating lilac for the nose and then I'll just hand stitch the little eyes in. Um, but you could also uh, maybe use buttons for the eyes, you could hand stitch the whole thing, you could, yeah, you could do all sorts of things. I'm going to keep it simple for this one. So I'm going to start by stitching the uh, whiskers or the mouth in. There you go. <laughs> so this is very speedy and yours will probably be much better. Um, I've just stitched the mouth on, I hand with the machine, hand stitched some eyes on very quickly and then stitched a little felt nose on. Um, you will hopefully have more time and can make your bunny face a lot more, um, well, just a little bit more involved, <laughs> but you get the general idea. We're going to put our bag together now. So you're gonna take the front piece and put it right side facing up. So literally the face of the bunny looking at you. You're then gonna take the back piece of the bag and put the right side, so the nice side, um, facing down onto the bunny face. So you should just be able to see the um, hemmed edge. And then take some clips or some pins and clip around the edge. The most important thing is to line up these top edges. If you um, have any discrepancies at the side, line up one of the side edges as well and then just trim the other side so that they're even. And if you have any discrepancy at the bottom, um, again, line it up at the top and then you can trim down anything at the bottom that doesn't match. Um, and that's kind of an easy fix to make sure that everything lines up. So I'm just gonna pop a couple of clips in around 
all sides or all, both sides and the bottom sorry and what we're going to do is we're going to stitch we're going to start at the top here we're going to stitch down the side pivot at the corner cross the bottom pivot here and back up here and we're going to do a locking stitch or reverse stitch at the top and the bottom as well so we'll start at the sides and the bottom obviously we're not going to start at the top because otherwise we won't get into our bags if you were using a different thread to do any of your decorating now is obviously the time to change it back to your matching thread and now we are finished except for the raw edges so it's totally up to you you could uh, the quickest and simplest way of finishing them is just to use a pair of pinking shears just trim the edges down with those little zigzag scissors um, and that will stop it from fraying um, you could do a narrow zigzag stitch all the way around the edge or if you feel like they're not gonna get a huge amount of daily use um, and are gonna be okay with just Easter eggs in, I just trim your threads down um, and not worry too much about finishing the edges unless your fabric is very, very prone to fraying. Um, so I'm just gonna do that now and then we can turn it right way out. How cute is that? It's our little Easter egg, Easter bunny bag, um, ready to put all of your chocolate in over Easter. Um, I just think they're really adorable. I'm really looking forward to seeing the ones that they set up on classes um, this week in the studio. And if you guys sew any up, please do uh, tag us in your makes or send us some pictures of it because I'd love to see them. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. I know it's a little bit different to the things I normally show you and talk to you about, but I love teaching children. Uh, obviously, if you're an adult and sewed this up, very well done. But if you're a child and you sewed it up, sewed it up then really, really well done. And I hope that you really enjoyed it. I think I will do a video with some tips on how to get children sewing and um, great things to do when you're sewing with children, not necessarily projects, but tips on how to sew with them safely. Um, if you'd like that, then let me know. If there are any other kind of kids projects you'd like me to show you as well, then um, drop them in the comments down below because uh, I really, yeah, I really love working on little projects like this. I think it's really fun and I'm really passionate about getting younger people into sewing. And as ever, if you've liked the video, please do give us a thumbs up, give us a like and subscribe uh, to the channel and then you'll see all of our other videos that come up. But uh, other than that, happy Easter, happy sewing, and I will see you again really soon. Take care guys, bye. bye.